Hey, hello there. Welcome here to my channel. And today is project number one from my series on learning how to crochet. By now, you have done lesson one, where you learned how to do the foundation chain. And then you did lesson two, where you learned how to do your single crochet. After your single crochet looks nice and even and uh, consistent, like the stitches look about the same, then you're ready to do a project. And the project you're going to do today will be a double-sided pot holder. Because you're making a pot holder, the yarn that you're going to use here is cotton. Cotton yarn. Okay, the acrylic worsted weight yarn, red heart yarn will not work because that's acrylic and that is not very good with heat or water. Cotton will do great for anything done for kitchen. Okay, it's water absorbent and also very heat resistant. So make sure that you have your cotton ready. I have a big roll here. You don't have to get something this big. It can be just a little smaller. There is different brands. Walmart has them, Joann's, any craft store or my links in the description below will have some um, of these as well. This project here is very simple. What you're doing is you're making pretty much a square but with a longer foundation chain. So it will become a little longer and a little taller. That's all you're doing. You will be doing two panels. See, there, there is the red one and there is the white one. So two different panels and these panels you will join. I will show you exactly how to do that. As for hooks, you're going to use the same hooks you used for your sample here, which is a five millimeter hook and a 5.25 millimeter hook. Pot holders make excellent presents and giving a present to somebody that you made, it blows people away. People don't, don't expect that because nowadays who makes things? Not very many, right? So you are different, you are unique and you made something special for somebody special. They're gonna love it. So try it. Yeah, it's, it's a very rewarding feeling when you are able to make something and give that to somebody and to see their faces and how much they appreciate that. So give it a try. So try these pot holders. Everybody can use them in the kitchen, grab pots, put pots on top. They're so, just so handy, okay? So go ahead, make your mom, your aunt, your cousins, make them happy. I'm sure they're gonna love it. And as you work your pot holders, I like to see them. If you can be part of my group on Facebook, join me there because I like to see pictures of what you're making. And also if you have Instagram, you can do it that way. Then tag my name so I can see it. If you don't have social media, no problem. Go ahead and send a comment in the comment section and let me know on how are you doing as you do a pot holder. Alrighty, we are ready to go. Let's grab those hooks and let's get busy. To crochet this double-sided pot holder, you will need cotton yarn. I have a couple options to show you and you can pick any and they will work great. Bernat is a good one. Then the Hobby Lobby has Crafter's Secret and they have a lot of vibrant colors. I, for some reason, I can't find as vibrant colors as Hobby Lobby's, so these are really awesome. Then Peaches and Cream, this one is very affordable, super cheap yarn, really. You can find this at Walmart at Michael's, Joann's, any craft store will have this. Then Hobby Lobby also has this cotton yarn here, which is called, I love this cotton, and it's smoother than these kind here. It's more expensive, but definitely has a very, very smooth feel to it. As for a crochet hook, I recommend you have two sizes, a five millimeter hook and a 5.25 millimeter hook. Note that if you see a 5.5 millimeter hook, it's the same. Okay, they are the same measurements. Some brands will label it 5.25, some brands will label it 5.5. As long as you see an I, they both will say I, it's the same thing. I will crochet my main stitches here with a five millimeter hook, but the foundation chain, I always like to make it with a slight bigger one. Then you will need a tapestry needle, and this has a dull point and a very big eye to weave in the ends. And finally, when you're done, we got to take care of those ends and snip them off. You will be making two panels and they will be identical. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the one here in white, and then you will repeat the process with a different color of your choice. I'm going to join my panels with the white color. So when I am done with the white, I am not finishing it off. I will leave it open like that. Whether on this one here, it's all finished up and I already cut it away from the red. 
Also today at the end of the white panel, I did a single crochet edging, right? So we continue the work, we do the edging, I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. And then when we are all around, we have to come back to the beginning. And to join that, I use a slip stitch. So take a look really quick right now on how a slip stitch is done. Insert the hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook right away. So let's do it one more time. Insert, yarn over, pull through, and through the loop right away. That is the slip stitch. Today I'm going to use white and red. As you're starting to put panels together that you have in two different colors so that you see the stitches clearly. So the other panel that I'm gonna have is gonna be red, but I will join both panels with white because it's easier to teach this way. Uh, white colors are easier to see. With a larger hook and your cotton yarn, let's get started. You need a foundation chain of 23 chains. So let's go. The first initial knot here, I make a loop here, insert the hook, and chain into it three times without letting go. There is one, two, and three. Hold, pull the string, and there we go. You got your initial knot and your very first chain. So let's do 23 chains. Here is one, two, three, four, five, six. So continue your chain until you have 23. And here is your 23 chains. All right, so let's switch hooks. I'm going to continue from now on with a slight smaller hook. So let's go. Single crochet in the second chain from the hook. There's the first one, there is the second. So insert and single crochet. There is one. Then go ahead and do the same thing on every single chain. So make sure that the right side of the chain is looking towards you. It tends to want to twist sometimes, so make sure it doesn't, so that the braided looking part of the chain is looking towards you, okay? So this you do now until the end of the chain. So I will let you work independently. And the first uh, row is always the, the um, stickiest, let's say it that way, because these chains are sometimes a bit tight. That's why I crochet the foundation chain with a slight bigger hook, so that this chain is flexible enough and that these first stitches get onto it smoothly. So do your job here and we'll meet when we are about to start row two. And here I am almost at the end of my very first row. I have one more stitch there, which is that very first chain. And it can be a little bit of a difficult one because that chain tends to be the tightest. So if you feel like you have to fight your hook into it, well, go for it, because that's exactly what it needs to um, get the, the stitch done. And then finish your single crochet right there. So here is my first row completed. So let's count our stitches. I had 23 chains so i will need to have 22 single crochets because i skipped that very first chain remember i went on the second chain from the hook that skips a chain so therefore you will have 22 stitches so look at the top here of each stitch and count the chain that stitch left so that would be that loop and that loop so let's go one two and 22. You don't need to count your stitches on every single row, but occasionally do, because sometimes weird things happen. We skip a stitch, we don't pay attention, and um, things do happen, and then suddenly your work is a little off. And if you feel like something went wrong, count your stitches. There might be a mistake there. So every four or five rows, make sure that you double check that you got the right amount of stitches. Now let's get started on row two. Before you turn, chain one. Note that every time when you finish a row, you're going to chain one and then turn every single time. Now from here, you're going to crochet on the next stitch, which is this opening right here. And make sure that you go ahead and find both loops because the other loop tends to be sort of hiding there. And mistakenly, you might put your hook right there and pick only one loop. It's not necessarily wrong, but for this work here, we want both loops. And then single crochet right into it. So that's your first stitch. Find the next one and go right into it. Find the other one, and so it is. Now that you're actually crocheting 
upon a previous single crochet row, it's a little easier. It's, it's, um, you get to just kind of fit the hook into each stitch a little bit more easily. And that's that. So do that until the end of the row. And then one more time, I'm going to finish up this row here with you and start the other one. Now this is the end of row two. There's two more stitches for you to go. And the last one here, this is the second to last. So the last one here, careful because this stitch always wants to lay over towards the other side and you could easily forget the back loop. So make sure that you don't. The back loop needs to come along. And there is that, okay? And finish up your single crochet. And now you're ready to get started on row three. So you chain one, turn and you start single crocheting on the nearest stitch right there and here you will work on the rest of your work on your on your own you are going to be doing a total of 26 rows i started here the third row and we will do 26 rows i will work on my 26 rows here you work on yours and when we are done with them we will do a border so talk to you soon now here are the 26 rows all done so it looks nice and square now we're going to be doing a single crochet border on all four sides and we will simply restart from where we stopped right here now instead of turning and doing another row we are going to continue this way now you will use the openings on the side of your work to insert your hook so these are not very even stitches it's a little bumpy here but i'll show you exactly where to put the hook into and i'm sure you will be successful so let's go now here where you inserted your last stitch you're going to do two more to have a total of three stitches there so there is one two and then three that will round up your corner makes it nice and cute now to proceed look carefully here and see that you will have a bigger opening and a littler opening a bigger one and a smaller one so that's the openings you will use to insert your hook and to do your single crochets on from here we're gonna start we're gonna ignore this one here because this became a little big because of the three uh stitches there so we're gonna start right here so from here to the other side we're going to have a total of 24 stitches so let's go so right into it and single crochet there is one and then the next one there is two then three and four and so on and so forth five six seven eight so you get the idea all right so i'm gonna do the whole thing here with you so we don't get lost <laughs> nine ten eleven twelve if i'm a bit too fast then just let me finish here the, the row, right? This edging. And then if you're still behind, just pause the video uh, for you to catch up. No problem with that. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 23 and the last one here 24 now we're going to make another corner so look here carefully and this is a little tricky to see where exactly to put your hook but i will simply pick something like right there and almost kind of force an opening there because if you go down here it's too low so you want it a bit more here on the edge so right there that's where I'm going to do three single crochets right here. Three single crochets. One, two, and three. There is your other corner. Okay. Now from here to here is a little bit more obvious. This was your foundation chain, right? So it looks a little bit different than the actual 
row of single crochets, but find the openings. I see them very clearly here, 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 and go from there. And we're going to have 20 single crochets until the next corner. So let's do them together. Again, if I'm too fast, you go ahead and pause the video and catch up. And then when you, you're there, we'll continue together, okay? Let's go. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Very good. Now we're ready for another corner. So on this one here, I like to ignore this little opening. It's a little tiny. I'm going to go right into the big one here, by the way, and I'm going to do three single crochets right in there. And as I continue my single crochets, I'm going to weave in this tail as I crochet. So it's always going to be tucked in here. Then later on, I don't have to weave in the end with a needle. So let's proceed. Keep this tail in the back there and three single crochets in that big spot right there. There goes one, two, see you're single crocheting this along and three very good now from here we come to the bumpy edge again and same thing you will find the openings so our next opening is right there okay make sure you keep this tail in the back there so it crochets along all right so let's go for one and then the next one two and three and four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. At some point, you can let go. Let go of that tail. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, oh, missed that one, there is 21, 22, now here 23, and here 24, okay, now here was your last row, so it kind of is a single crochet already, so we are just actually make a corner and crochet one more row over it so that we finish at this corner here. All right, so where are we gonna insert? So here again, kind of find your way into it. So there is your last stitch. I would say right there, just under that first chain right there, see? So let's make that your corner. Let's go, let's make this loop a little smaller. There we go. Um, one, two and three there is your corner and we're gonna have now 20 to the other side one two three four <clears throat> five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and there is 20. Okay, now here is kind of where you ended the block and you started the edge, right? So kind of two things at once happened there. So don't overthink this, simply grab the next stitch, slip stitch, and put it flat here, 
and there we go so making this border here we'll make sure that both panels will match perfectly when we put them together now that your two panels are ready let's join them i am going to join with white so this is the one that i did not cut off and this is where i stopped so i know that this side is the right side it does have a wrong side here the single crochet looks not exactly so nice on the other side it's nicer when you have the chain sort of facing you don't you see that yeah so here if you're not quite sure what is the right or wrong here kind of look around and just take a look at the edge and that single crochet when you see the chains more towards you than not see here it looks different then you know that this one here is the right side very good for you to join you need to do the wrong sides together so here is right here is wrong here was the right side here is the wrong so i need to join the wrong sides okay now make sure that of course you're lining up the crochet the single crochet rows we don't want to do it this way that would be awkward that's why we did a round of single crochets around each panel with equal amount of stitches so that when we join them when we join the panels around those stitches we have the exact amount of stitches to work with so let's go so your wrong sides are joined and we're gonna go and start right here where we left off and you got to be nice and slow here and careful on which loops you are working with and i'm going to zoom in my camera here so you can see better uh, should be about right there we go and here is my first corner and then remember here we had three stitches so i want you to pay attention to the one that was right in the middle so this one here you joined this one was the one in the middle and that's the next one so go ahead and pick up not the front loop the back loop right there now take a look at the other panel and also try to find which one was the middle stitch it's a little harder to see but you know that there is your three right there see and it it's kind of go by by the look really the middle is right there and just pick up the back loop so the front loop will look towards the right side see and then those two loops Go ahead and make a single crochet into it. And then once that first stitch is put together, let's grab the other one. So you skip the bottom loop here, which normally we call the front loop, pick up the back loop, and then you go towards the red panel. And here, because this is the wrong side, so here is the front loop and the back loop. So technically speaking, you're after this back loop from this side. And that looks like here. See, there's your other single crochet. If that first stitch right here looks a bit stretched out, don't worry about it. It evens itself out once we are done. It kind of falls in place. So don't think it's weird. It's a little stretchy. So let's do a couple more stitches here together. What this does is it aligns up every single crochet with the other single crochet perfectly so that see that is one and then you go to the next one so that when you go over the corners on the next uh, three corners it will get there together that's why you can't double up here and you can't go forward you have to line them up one by one because otherwise come to the corner here you could be off like yeah, you should arrive at the corner, both panels at the same time. Is that making sense? Let's do a couple more stitches. This is not fast work. You have to work this slowly. It just can't be fast at all. So there is the back loop. And there is the back loop of the other panel. There. Good. And keep working it through if you end up doing every loop let's say i pick up two loops here and i pick up the other two loops here yes it's possible but it makes it a very thick joining and then on the other side it doesn't look as neat because here 
we have this line that forms with the loops that you didn't use. And I think that always looks so nice and tidy. So I prefer just picking up one loop of each panel. Does that make sense? So let's do two more together. There, and then there and there. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so work it out here throughout all sides. Okay, when you come to the corner here, it should match. And then all the stitches should match here. And it should match again. When we get here, there's this tail here. I'm gonna show you how to get over this. It's not really a big deal. Weaving this in is the easiest thing. You don't even need a needle. And then you're gonna work to the end, join here, and you're practically done. So let's try to work here independently. I work on mine, you try to work on yours. We'll go over this bump here together and finish up here. Okay, see you in a bit. Now here is that last corner. I'm going to keep this inside here and just let it be there. It doesn't have to be weaved in at all because these two parts are joined. So if there's something dangling inside here, nobody's gonna see that, okay? Now here is my three single crochets on the white panel and the three single crochets on the red panel look a little weird, but because of that knot, but they're there. That's one, that's the middle one. And then this one here with this ugly knot, we're just gonna find the best spot to stick that uh, hook into and go for it. You really don't have to be too tidy there because it's just, just a difficult place, okay? Now let's try. Here is one loop and then the red loop, single crochet. One loop, then the red loop, single crochet. So grab your white one first. And then here, just sort of push that string to the side and look at it and sort of like, yeah, go guess anywhere really and go for it. It's hard to see a front loop and a back loop on that one. So you're good, that's it. Don't overthink it, just get over it and move along. <laughs> that's how you do it. <laughs> and then proceed, see? Now you're doing your last, your last side that will be a couple more stitches until the end here. And here, yeah, we'll stop about, where is it again? This is where we join. So we will stop like right there, more or less over here, and then we'll finish together. And here it is, we are almost done, okay? So let's grab these last two stitches. I have two more to go and one to join. So that is a white loop and the red one in the back there. And then one more. And this is where we started the joining. So just grab that top loop there and then find whatever in the back there, whatever you see that looks like a loop and just join. Don't have to be too, too fussy over that one. And that's that, see? Good, now let's cut off the string and weave it in and then you're done. All right, so now here we snip off and we do have just this end here to weave in because all the other ends already were weaved in as we crocheted or that last red one is in there somewhere. But there, it's ready and it's nice and thick. So let's grab that needle. And it's very simple here because this has two sides joining, right? So you don't really need to hide the string too much should just kind of like get into the middle there between the panels i kind of come out here and then i go in there again and just kind of slide it towards the middle as far as you want to go and then cut it off and you are all done perfect good and then stretch out the sides a little see white or red there's so many colors you could choose to do this with right and it's done now please show me a picture of your work whether on facebook come to my group i'll add you there or on instagram you can post this on your profile tag me and then i'll see it and i can send you my 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 comments on it so i'd love to see your your work your beautiful double-sided pot holder very good then until the next project, see you soon.